Um, here you are, Chautauqua. It's your first experience. What's the Chautauqua experience like for you? Oh, it's been magic. I mean, I think it's everybody has tried to explain it and no one's done it justice so right. as soon as I said I was coming I got just reams of emails from people trying to explain you know what what to expect and nobody even came close and I think it's really been uh, you know there are very few places in the world that really talk about tolerance and pluralism and trying to speak across boundaries and across disciplines that actually do it. You know, that's often a sort of self-congratulatory enterprise and it's code for, so come speak to my discipline. Uh, but this has been really an amazing cross-pollinization of ideas and people and speakers and everywhere you go, something is happening, you know, whether it's my six-year-old sat through an entire ballet, uh, you know, we, we Ha went to an amazing lecture about civil rights in Israel for women. Um, so you just have this feeling that there's this burbling effort to foster understanding and dialogue across, you know, and a community of people who want to understand, who want to be made to understand. And I just can't tell you, particularly at this moment in this country, where everybody is in a shoebox of their own ideas and won't listen and won't hear anything that right. doesn't completely comport with their life view. It's just like taking a bath of tolerance and listening. And it's, sign me up. <laughs> are, you, do you, are you gonna plan on writing anything about your experience here, Chautauqua? I think I will. I think I might have to. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure what I'm gonna write. I've been thinking about it. Um, but I do think I've been, writing and thinking a lot for the past year and doing a lot of panels on civility. Um, and a, a big, big panel, the National Endowment for the Humanities gave a big grant to the ABA to think about these issues and lawyers and civility. Uh, and I did an event with them this spring. And it seems to me that this is an incredibly useful model for how to think about some of these issues in really concrete terms. You know, civility is, again, I think often code for everybody has to listen to me. Yeah. Uh, and why doesn't everybody respect me? And anybody who doesn't like what I say is suppressing my First Amendment rights to speech. That's where we're at in this country. And so I, I've been really looking at this week through this prism of everybody talks about civil discourse, but nobody can concretize it into how you would kind of on the ground implement conversations about things that are very hard and very, you know, riven and fraught, but are being undertaken with, I guess what I'm struck by is that everybody gives the benefit of the doubt. You know, the presumption isn't you're a liar and you're trying to destroy the country. The presumption seems to be everywhere I've turned. I may not agree with you, but help me understand. And so I've been, I mean, I can't tell you how bad my hate mails become in the past two years, just how angry this country is right now and how quickly we've come to a place, I think particularly, you know, in the media where we can't talk to each other anymore. So I, I've been really doubly impressed by that just in light of what I've been worried about and thinking about in my own career.